my name is SJ, I am a mum of three and my second son Finn is four and he has a pretty severe speech delay. I just did a video about the five signs of toddler speech delay and had such an overwhelming response of um, people sharing their positive stories about how they've managed to get through this or people saying I'm just getting into it now, my baby's maybe two and I'm noticing the signs. Thank you so much for every single message. I feel totally different this week. I feel much more positive and much more like this is the beginning of the end of this problem for Finn I guess. Um, so I wanted to share with you 10 speech therapy techniques that you can do at home to encourage good speech. These aren't ever to replace professional speech therapy. Professional speech therapy is brilliant and you know these aren't the full extent of what Finn is doing now that he had his first professional speech therapy session last Monday but I realised it would be unhelpful to share exactly his technique that he's learning because each child has such an individual speech issue and actually she said his is very individual um, and quite unique so he starts everything with a G. But these are speech therapist approved so they are things, techniques I have been told to do um, that I was told to do a few months ago that I've implemented at home. They're very very easy and simple. You can get started even from baby. So I'm already starting these with my one year old baby um, and they are great to encourage speech. So I'm literally just going to list them because they are so simple you will totally get them but I would love it if you let me know in the comments below any that you also do that you find helpful. I would love it if you subscribed especially if you are having a speech and language issue. There are so many people experiencing this I've realised who are coming to YouTube for that community support and that help and they've got advice, they've got techniques so I would love to build that community up here. So tip number one they told me to encourage listening. So speech follows listening and being able to differentiate between the sounds, particularly the sounds, I'm really conscious of how I'm speaking, particularly the sounds at the beginning of letters and at the end of letters. So I think that I noticed that when we were out and about with my toddler I'd often be like, oh can you see something red or can you see the birds and I was doing a lot of like sight things rather than can you hear the car or what can we hear now, what animals might we be able to hear and encouraging that positive listening and they said that is a really good thing to be doing from a very young age and that should translate into them really filling up. They were sort of saying imagine you've got these empty files and you need to fill them all with all the letters that you need for speech and fins are pretty much empty apart from a few prominent sounds that he has so his brain keeps offering him those sounds so by helping him listen very carefully he's going to fill in the rest of his filing cabinet. So encourage great listening and as I said that can just be from very much observational, what is the, what's the word for observational that goes with ears? Don't know. <laughs> but just basically observational listening I'm sure it's a thing. Um, so yes what you're hearing when you're out and about is a great one. Tip number two goes a bit hand in hand with that which is clapping out the words. So if we're saying like banana, is it, would you like a banana? <laughs> or go and talk to Freddy, Freddy, and just clapping them out. So again, they're not just listening to the first sound, they're also listening to all the sounds in between. Um, and I know a lot of people have problems with the children not saying the end sound, or not saying sort of the middle sounds. Finn's got problems with pretty much all of them, but it's a really good way of doing it. And I noticed now that even with his prominent g sound, if he's saying Evelina, he'll say Gegagina he'll pronounce all the syllables where before it would just go you like it wouldn't kind of even sound like anywhere near it really improving how people can understand him because he's saying the syllables and that's just a very simple thing you can do at home tip number three is really really important and it's one i wish i had known way earlier which is to repeat what they're saying incorrectly correctly but don't ask them to say it back to you. So I was always, big thing for us was the word milk, he can't say the word milk, he says gulk. And we always were saying milk, can you say milk? It's milk, mmm milk. And you know the therapist was explaining to me often their very first words are very emotional for them so words like milk words like mama she was like that's a very emotive word for a child and I was like gosh she's so correct she's amazing she's very psychological and just any word anything it's very hard to get them to repeat it back all the time it just makes them feel 
frustrated and defeated as well and Finn hates to do that with me so I don't ask him to repeat now but I always repeat it back correctly and this is a really good thing to explain to a nursery setting or a childminder or a nanny that they should always repeat it correctly don't ever start to mimic them and use their words or anything it's always repeat it correctly I'll get you some milk milk <laughs> Another great tip is to point to your mouth while you're talking. So a lot of it, the therapy that Finn is having now, is to look at how we're using our lips. He doesn't really use his lips much when he's talking because all his sounds come from the back of his throat. So it's really important, a technique that they may use if your child, as I said, all children are different, is to look into the mirrors, to copy funny faces. But just something very simple you can do when you're chatting to your child, everyday language, you're just pointing. So it might be, would you like some milk in your cereal? And then just encouraging them, they will just look at your mouth and obviously exaggerate a little bit the sounds and the lip shapes that you're making. This is good for things like p, 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 um, and mmm, like things like that. The fifth tip is to pick one or two sounds to focus on. So as I said, Finn is missing a lot of sounds. It might be that your child is just missing one or two sounds. Um, I know that T, my sister, is having a problem with her three-year-old at the moment who's missing her T's, which is a shame because her name's Lottie. <laughs> so, but whereas Finn is missing a lot, each sound can take up to six months for them to master and sometimes Finn now has got to say that he's mastered the sound but he's not incorporating it into everyday language at all. E. <gasps> so you can say b but he would never use that if he was to say ball he would say ghoul you know and things like that so pick one so while we're dealing with a lot of missing sounds they said pick one or two that you're coping with every single time. The speech therapist would probably pick some for you and help you with this. A really top tip is to maybe pick something that is in their name, like the T for Lottie or the F for Finn, because it is really empowering for a child to be able to say their name, which I realise now has been a huge upset for me that Finn can't say his own name or be understood when people ask their name, because that's what they ask a lot. They ask him how old he is and he'll do his fingers, but he can't say his name. Tip number six is when you're talking to your child, especially if you're trying to encourage any speech, is to give them choices. So to ask them, you know, would you like um, Marmite or Jam? And then wait for them to speak and then they'll say it back. And this really helps, particularly if you're finding them very hard to understand. So sometimes I find Finn very hard to understand and I can't always understand what he's saying. And by giving them the choices, it gives them the success of being understood because I know Marmite sounds different from jam <laughs> um, and so it's much easier and this is a great technique to teach grandparents or babysitters because one of the things that's very hard is to leave your child when they have a speech delay and I don't leave Finn very often but you know obviously my mum might come to look after him for an afternoon or just be with us playing for the afternoon and it's nice then to say you know that's a really easy way of understanding them and it gives them that success. Number seven is an amazing one which I've just kind of got my head around which is to give them new words and introduce new words all the time rather than trying to go back over those old ones. So we've had this big thing with the word milk. Milk, for some reason, you say it all the time, don't you, as a mum? And I've been constantly saying milk, say milk, say milk, and sort of seeing that as my success word in a way. Whereas a speech therapist was like, forget that word. That is so ingrained in his language now as that word that would be very hard for him to change. And we know ourselves, like anything, if we're trying to retrain your brain to say something differently that you've said the same way for a while. That's very hard. Whereas introducing new words is where he's gonna have his success. Number eight is how to do this at home and don't make it homework. I've made this huge mistake where I thought it would be really fun that when Freddie, my eldest, did his homework that Finn would sit and do his speech words with me and do some speech at home. Quickly, that came associated with homework, which of course he's got an older brother, they're going, oh, I don't want to do my homework. Um, and then he was having to sit down at the table for five minutes, that was all it was to try to do some speech. It doesn't work, so don't make it work. Don't make it at the table. Don't make it a separate part of your day. It really doesn't work, and that's where speech therapy is so amazing, because that can be, you know how they perform so much better for somebody else, um, whereas for us, it's just, torture. I mean, I have torture every single day with real homework from school. I don't want to make this 
seem hard for him so yes don't make them sit down and do work but do reward them so I've now got a reward chart and um, for Finn you don't need to buy anything fancy I just write mine up if he practices every single day just as we go around the house as we go about our day a top tip for reward charts of any kind is to let them pick their own treats that they want at the end of the week go here you go what's that go here you go Oreos that's what you want who knew? So that is now his treat and then he's chosen that he'll work harder towards it. The tip number nine related to that is learning through play. I mean, we all know this so well, but it's a really easy thing to do. So what we mainly do is use some Jolly Phonics. So Jolly Phonics, if you haven't started school yet, is how they will learn sounds now. It was all new to me. So they don't do the alphabet so much as phonics, which means how the letter is actually pronounced within a word. So rather than B, they say B. Um, or k rather than c because that's how it actually sounds in language so jolly phonics have got tons of resources i will link below some resources we have then the keywords that he's using printed out phonetically on the table and we'll play games like how many characters or how many toys can we find beginning with m mm, or which of these begin with m mm, and which begin with b and can they jump onto those and just as you're playing maybe just have your two keyword phonics next to you and whenever you can incorporate those into your game you know how to do this um i can do a whole video of ways to do this if you're interested let me know in the comments below and number 10 is a really important one that somebody actually left me as a comment on my five signs of speech delay she left me a very positive story about her own journey to going through a speech delay as a child and it was important to her and i think it's a really important one that as parents we'll take on board to talk and explain to your child what's happening and I think sometimes we overcompensate for them and we talk for them and we don't like to let them feel bad about anything because why would we ever want our child to feel different or self-conscious that's the opposite of what I'm trying to do with Finn however she was saying and it made total sense that it's important to understand that your speech is a bit delayed but that that's okay because we're going to work towards it and it doesn't matter because it's not the be all and end all of your person it's just one thing that's happening at the moment and we all develop at different times especially if your child gets older like Finn is four and you might have noticed in my signs of speech delay he came in he was in the room with me and I'm talking about his speech delay because I like to just now be very open with him about it and I've spoken to his older brother and said look Finn has this issue, this is how he talks, I'm going to need you to really help him, these are the techniques, so everyone is aware, and the same with everyone is aware of his peanut allergy, you know, that's a really serious thing everyone needs to know about, this is a very serious thing everyone needs to know about, and Finn needs to understand it, in the same way he understands that he's allergic to peanuts, and that we have to check everything, sometimes he can't have birthday cake, he accepts that, it's easy for him to accept that sometimes people don't understand him, if he understands that he does have a speech delay, and that that is why he's having these extra special fun lessons to learn and that's why we're so proud of him every single week for trying his hardest and yeah I knew I'd get emotional because <laughs> one day in time and talking about Finn but yeah it's really important to talk to them about it so just do it in a very casual setting I do it you know over the breakfast table you know Finn um, your speech probably isn't as good as them um, some of the other children in your nursery some of your words haven't come yet and so we're going to help and um, work on that together and I'm going to really help you and so is Freddie and we've got this really fun lessons that we're going to have extra special lessons just for you because you're going to need a bit of help with it but it's okay because you're going to get there because you try so hard so just anything like that and then they can come and ask you questions because they will worry we don't understand what's going on in their mind so much particularly with a child with speech delay but he probably just can't articulate those feelings so it is important to yeah I think that was a really amazing tip that I got given if you have any more insights I would love to hear them if you would like more tips let me know if you would like more games let me know I am going to be continuing to talk to you about how we got on with our speech therapy I'm going to talk to you about the steps you should go through to get a speech diagnosis and get help if that is interesting and also just the emotional roller coaster that is speech delay for parents because that is mostly the messages I've got from you guys is like I feel so emotional emotion, and the emotion almost stumps you in getting help. Thanks guys, I hope this has been helpful. As I said, don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see all those videos and I will see you very, very soon. Thanks for your support and let's do this together. <laughs> Bye.